All right. So hello, everybody. Welcome to our workshop today, um, which is going to be um, about online engagement, um, but focusing on the tool Pear Deck, which essentially brings online engagement to the classroom. Um, what I'm going to do before we begin, I'm just going to uh, give you guys an overview of how this, uh, how the presentation is going to go. Uh, so I did include some um, some Pear Deck slides um, in the presentation itself. So you guys kind of get an idea of, um, you know, how to use it as a teacher, but how the student will also view it. Um, just so you know, at the end, you will get the opportunity to kind of uh, play around with it yourself as well. So, and we'll be there to kind of ask, uh, answer any questions that you might have, okay? So what I'll do is I'll start with just showing you guys quickly on how to access the, the slide, which is very easy. So I'll just share my screen and we'll begin. Okay, perfect. So, okay, so I created a Google slide, but I did add the, uh, the Pear Deck add-on, which again, we'll talk about that and how to add it onto your Google slide later on. Um, but it's relatively easy. Once you add it on and you create your Pear, Pear Deck slides, all you have to do is start lesson. Okay, so the green button on the right side. So I'm going to press on it. And then what you're gonna get on your screen is you're going to get two different options. So one is student-paced activity and the other one, the instructor-paced activity. The student pace is mainly for um, giving assignments and for independent work, which again, is interactive for the students. Um, the one that I've used as a teacher when I was teaching online is mostly the instructor-paced activity, which is live. So I, we're gonna use that one today. So I'll just click on this right here and it will start. So what I'm gonna ask everybody to do on their computer is to go to this website. You can just copy paste it to joinpd.com. Once you're there, just enter this code and then you will be able to access the slides. So I'll do that at the same time as you guys. So essentially what I'm doing right now, what I'm sharing with you guys is what a teacher would share with their students, okay? So I'm gonna go as a student myself and as a teacher. Okay, is everybody have access? Am I supposed to put a space between it? No, no space. Well, if you copy paste it, I think it should be fine. Did you type it or copy paste it? I typed it, but it's not, but I mean, but that's okay. Either way, it should work, but. It did work either way. I did put a space. So. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Uh, remember, Mona, we were asking if you needed uh, a Google account. You do. Oh. Uh, I believe so, because it's asking me to sign up. Oh, really? Because uh, it it shouldn't. Does it, is everybody does it is everybody logged into their Google account right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But does it work uh, outside of Google? Yeah, it works with uh, it's an add on, I guess. It, it for really this works. one, I'm using a Google slide. So but yes, it works with other with Teams and with PowerPoint yeah. and whatnot as well. So yeah, Perfect. okay. I can share here. All I'll, what I'll do is I'll put the link to the presentation on the on the chat. Copy link. So you know, it, it allowed me to to log in with my EMSB account. Okay. Using my EMSB password. Oh. Okay. You're and you only, than you, I am. <laughs> you only have um, Microsoft, is that correct? You, you, EMSB doesn't have uh, Google. Okay. So there you go. Right. So you probably have to, yeah, you need some sort of credential to log on, it's quite possible. Okay, so we'll start. So I'll close this one. All right, so again, uh, this presentation is going to be about online engagement using Pear Deck to kind of engage students at the same time. Um, so we'll start with the first one. Um, you guys should see on your screen uh, this slide. And on this slide, essentially what you could do is draw or type two things you already know about today's topic. So you can either type something or 
you're feeling creative, you can draw something as well. And then I'll show you guys how I'm going to be able to see the responses at the bottom. And the good thing about it is, as you can see, I can see one of the responses. <laughs> I guess that's like nothing. Um, uh, and the good thing about this is that it's anonymous, right? So if you have 20, 30 students in your class and they're writing stuff and they're saying, I know absolutely nothing about this subject, nobody's feeling any pressure or feeling like they're being judged in any way. It's all anonymous. As a teacher, you'll be able to see who responds to what, but the other students, once you're sharing the screen, won't be able to see which student said what. Perfect. So I'm gonna hide the responses, so hide, and then once I open it, somebody is writing. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Paradox equals zero. Okay, perfect. That's what we're here for, to learn more about it. Um, all right, so let's go to the next slide. And this one, uh, again, when I was teaching online, I tried to use a lot of slides at the beginning uh, when I was using Pear Deck to kind of gauge where the students are emotionally and kind of do a little stress check. Um, as we know, a lot of the students, like my adult students, you know, had other responsibilities, maybe they had kids at home, um, and, uh, and I wanted to kind of know where their headspace is at, and that's why I mainly use that, and this one, again, you can move uh, the, the, whatever, the arrow, whatever you call it, around and kind of see from zero to ten how you're feeling, and then it also gives everybody else in the class an idea of where everybody's head is at and so if somebody is feeling a little stress and there's a couple of people that feel like that no they they kind of understand each other so i'll show the responses and you can see here oh most people are in a okay space right now so that's good to see <laughs> okay perfect so you get the idea again the interaction, right? So as a teacher, you'll be able to see this and also you'll be able to share it with the rest of the class. Um, and for those students that essentially don't necessarily want to share um, or say anything out loud, it gives them the opportunity to kind of engage in the um, presentation that you're doing or in the lecture that you're giving. So I'll hide the responses here and we'll go to the next one, okay? Hi, it's my turn. <laughs> so uh, Pear Deck will, will help in uh, putting together engaging online classes uh, because it offers strategies for keeping students engaged in online learning environments. When you think about students that are not super participative, that do not like to speak up or so, things like that, then they will find their space. They're, they'll find a safe space. Uh, so that they can uh, participate. It creates a welcoming and inclusive, inclusive online environment. And uh, you can use uh, interactive tools like Paradeck, Kahoot, or even Mentimeter as you go. You encourage participation with discussion boards, breakout rooms, and polls. And it provides regular feedback and communication with students. And teachers can know readily what's going on and how things are going and how engaged their students are. Do you, and this is again, to just give you guys an idea of what you can do with Pear Deck. So I put a true and false. Uh, did you agree with those statements? Do you think they were true or do you think they were false? So again, I'll wait to tell you guys respond and then I'll sh show the responses. What, what are we supposed to respond to them? To the previous slide, uh, do you agree ah. with the statements that were said? So as you can see, as we answer, the bar gets longer and longer. And so you get a, an idea right, right away of what the tendency is mm -hmm. with your, the responses that you get. All right, so let's move on. And let's look at some challenges of online classes, just generally speaking, not even just focusing on Pear Deck, but just want to kind of talk about that a little bit so that we're aware of it. So um, you know, for myself, I know, like I mentioned previously, uh, when I was teaching online, there was potential distractions from the home environment. That was one of the big ones that I encountered with. So that's something to keep in mind. So again, using tools like Pear Deck is an engaging student is probably kind of kind of um, keep them more um, 
engage in in their home environment and and less distracted um also the limited opportunities for face-to-face -face interaction right um i mean i had students that would turn off their camera um so you know you don't get that face-to-face -face interaction that you get in the classroom um so again the more engaging the classes the more fun i always say if you make it fun then the students are more likely to kind of turn on their camera and participate um, and then we have to also consider the technical difficulties and connectivity issues, um, technical di difficulties when it comes to any tools that you might be using in the classroom. So be ready always for that, right? So some students are, might be a little bit less uh, tech savvy, uh, and that's okay. And uh, make sure that if you are able to kind of answer those questions that they might have if you are introducing a new tool uh, so that you can help them kind of navigate through that. All right, so the best practices for online class engagement. Um, you can set clear expectations and guidelines for participation. You can offer flexible deadlines and schedules to accommodate diverse student needs. Uh, you can even change your mind mid mid session or mid class. You can add, remove. It really does allow for a lot of uh, flexibility on the teacher's part as well incorporate real world applications and examples in course material and use multimedia and varied formats to keep students engaged. As far as benefits of online uh, classes, engaging online classes, higher student retention rates, of course, students are more interested, they have a, a better time with your classes, they feel more engaged, therefore they will stay, they will have less of a tendency also to fall behind. Uh, it improves student learning outcomes and academic achievement, uh, enhances students' motivation and participation, and allows for positive impact on student attitudes towards online learning. Because it's fun to be online for mm -hmm. once. But, yep, that's what we want to do. Make it yep. as fun as possible. <laughs> All right, so now let's dive in into what is Pear Deck. Um, so what is Pear Deck? So Pear Deck is an interactive presentation platform that allows real-time student engagement and feedback during the class. Um, it is different from some other presentation tools because it prioritizes students' engagement and interaction and collaboration amongst them and allowing them, again, to, to have the real-time feedback and the personalized learning. Um, Again, from my experience, when I was teaching on, online, um, usually without using any type of tools, and I'm sure those of you that taught online or are teaching online probably can relate, um, it's about 50% engagement, I would say, maybe even less sometimes. And most of the time, it's the same students that answer the questions, right? You have the one or two students that are the eager ones, and they're continuously participating. Um, so this tool is essentially a perfect example of how education tech can increase engagement and participation and make your class more an equitable, equ equitable space where all students get a chance to participate. And we'll look at some studies and, and some statistic on, on um, what the percentage was afterwards when you know, teachers that actually used Paradigm versus the ones that didn't. But before we do, I just want to show you guys a one minute video about what is Pear Deck to kind of give you guys an even clearer idea. Is 
it's just a deck away. <laughs> okay, perfect. So now, before we dig more into, you know, what is Pear Deck and how can we use it, I kind of, based on what we just talked about, I want to kind of get your feedback a little bit. Um, if you understand or if you feel a little confused or no, stop right now, need help. So again, go to your slide and we'll look at some of your responses. Okay. So this is great because, you know, as a teacher, a lot of times, as we know, a lot of students will not raise their hand if they don't understand, they don't want to speak up. So this is a perfect example of how you can kind of learn where your students are at, right? Um, and, and stop and, and kind of see, okay, is there any questions? If you see most of your students are saying, stop, I need help, or half are saying, I need help, then you can start maybe asking those questions to kind of clarify things that need to be clarified. Um, so yeah, definitely a very, very useful tool in, in terms of understanding um, where your students are at uh, in terms of understanding. And, and if I may um, mm -hmm. interject here, I mean, yeah. you're showing, you were showing us the results uh, a few seconds ago. And when you see that one student is, uh, you know, or a few yeah. students are confused, you don't have to stop and say that they are, but really just maybe reword what you just said, or use, you know, just reformulate something so that maybe they will change their cursor up to the, uh, up to the, the left side. So you can yep. see where they are and you can just do it naturally without them being necessarily aware that some people are dragging or not having any as mm -hmm. a, as easy a time as others. Absolutely. And and another thing that it, it makes me think of now that you mentioned that, Julie, is that um, at the bottom of the screen as a teacher, you can actually add new prompts. So if you do see a lot of students uh, not understanding or feeling confused, um, and they don't necessarily maybe want to speak up and say it, you can add a new prompt. And you can create a board where the students will be able to type their question. And what is it that they don't understand? Um, so it gives you even a better idea to kind of accumulate that data, right? And it doesn't mean that during your lecture, you need to look at those questions and answer them right away, but at least you'll know where the confusion is and can kind of go back to it and clarify as needed. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so, so why yes, why use Pear Deck? So uh, Pear Deck increases student engagement and participation. As we were saying earlier, it enables real-time feedback and personalized learning. We just had an example right here where you can see how things are going. And if you are, if you have a few students that are dragging or not too, they're not too sure, you can just go back. You can insert other prompts as you go. It improves this comprehension and retention of material uh, because of the visual factor as well. Some of our students are more visual learners, so that helps a lot. Uh, provides teachers with insights and analytics on uh, student performance as they go, is, which is also very important for teachers. It integrates with Google Slides and other popular presentation tools like PowerPoint and Teams, for example, facilitates remote and hybrid learning environments. And there's also a, a way to be asynchronous. Uh, Mona can touch upon that a bit later on, but there is a way for students to go back and mm -hmm. take the class that they missed, for example. Facilitates remote, we just said that, offers a variety of interactive questions, types, and activities supports differentiated instruction and accessibility needs, fosters collaboration and communication among students and teachers. All right, so uh, this is a statistics that I wanted to kind of just briefly uh, touch on. Um, so according to a survey of uh, 500 teachers who use Pear Deck, 92% of respondents reported that it increased students' engagement, 86% said it improved student understanding, and 84% said it helped them identify students who needed additional support. Uh, so again, you could see that, you know, going from maybe, you know, 30 to 50% and going to the 90 to 80% is a huge um, increase. And then a, a case study of high school history teachers uh, who used Pear Deck found that students who participated in Pear Deck activities had higher exam scores than those who didn't. And I can attest to that myself, 
when I started using Pear Deck, um, I mean, I was kind of thrown into the online teaching overnight because of the pandemic. And um, I had to kind of navigate through that. And I, I, I could totally attest to the fact that once I started using tools like Pear Deck and making my lectures more engaging, I definitely had more student engagement. Um, I definitely uh, also understood where my students are at um, in terms of their understandings and whatnot. Um, and generally, uh, just my more participation, more participation from my students side. Uh, and I could see that the students actually enjoyed it and, and had fun during class. And that was, uh, that, that's what I wanted to kind of bring into my online classes. Okay. So there are several different ways of using Pear Deck in the classroom. Uh, one can be a live presentation. So you use Pear Deck to create live presentation that can be delivered synchronously to students during a virtual class session. Then teachers can share their screen with students, present their Pear Deck presentations as they would in a traditional classroom. So we are currently doing that. We're using the teacher paste, but nonetheless, uh, you'll see that there are other possibilities as well. But it is a live presentation and people interact as they go. You have interactive homework where teachers can use Pear Deck to create the homework assignments that help students review and practice together the material that they've learned. Teachers can then use Pear Deck's grade book to, tra to track student progress and provide feedback on their responses. We can do formative assessments as well with Pear Deck, uh, and it allows for real-time formative assessments, just like we would do in a classroom setting in person. It helps them gauge students' understanding, uh, gauge, sorry, student understanding and adjust instructions as needed. For example, a teacher can use multiple choice questions to check for understanding, free response questions to encourage critical thinking, uh, draggable activities to help students categorize and organize information. You can also have group activities. Uh, Pear Deck offers a variety of group activities that encourage collaboration and teamwork. You can use the team up feature to randomly group students, assign them a task or a question to work on together. You can also use the flashcard factory activity where students work together to create and review flashcards themselves. Collaborative note taking is another feature. Uh, so there are takeaway features that allow students to take notes on the presentation as they go. Uh, this feature can be used for collaborative note taking where students work together to create a co comprehensive set of notes on the material. The, this then is shared among themselves. Teachers can also use the draggable activities uh, to have students categorize and organize information collaboratively. And interactive lectures can be used to create interactive, uh, interactive uh, lectures that keep students engaged and active during class. Teachers can use the temperature check feature to get a quick sense of how students are feeling. We did that uh, earlier in a few, a few, a few slides uh, earlier. And uh, or you can do the sketch feature to have students draw and annotate on the presentation. So that's also something that's very useful. Um, and then we're going to just touch on Pear Deck add-ons and integration. So the, the one that I'm using today is the Google Slides, which we're going to, uh, at the end of the presentation, we're going to all do together. Um, so the Google Slide integration, so Pear Deck integrates seamlessly into Google Slides, allowing you to create and present interactive Pear Deck presentation directly from your Google Drive. Uh, so definitely you could do that and we'll do that later on. Um, and then for Google Classroom, for those teachers that are using Google Classroom, uh, allowing teachers to create and distribute a Pear Deck presentation to their classes directly from Google Classroom, homework-wise or assignment-wise, they could do that. They could just post the presentation on their Google Classroom. Teachers can also use Pear Deck's gradebook to view and grade students' responses to um, interactive questions and activities. Um, and lastly, for Microsoft Teams as well, a Pear Deck also integrates with Microsoft Teams, allowing teachers to create and present Pear Deck presentation directly uh, within Teams. Um, they can share their Pear Deck join code with their students through Teams, and students can easily, uh, again, access and uh, participate in the presentation. Okay, so... 
now I just want you guys to take a, one minute to write um, the most important thing that you think you learned about Pear Deck before we start actually practicing to use it. So write maybe one word about what is it that kind of um, resonated with you when it comes to using a tool just like Pear Deck. So I see here interaction increases, engagement. So that obviously that's a big one. That's what we want from our students for them to be engaged and to interact and to connect together and for te teachers to connect with them as well. Um, the very many possible applications of Pear Deck, so po the different possibilities that Pear Deck has, there's many options, there's there many different things that you could do with it. And then the temperature check, obviously, that's a great one because uh, we want to always make sure um, that we understand where our, our students are at, whether it's um, related to the lecture that we're giving or even, you know, what we did at the beginning, the stress check. I found that very useful. How are you feeling today, right? Um, it's a really good way to kind of understand maybe why one student is not as engaged versus, you know, they that they were more engaged. So really those tools will help you, again, understand your students more and more and get them engaged as much as possible. And talking about temperature check and feeling check, now you have a chance to tell us how you're feeling after this. again it's it's pretty cool feature you know it gives it a little hair so it's it's funny so I mean it always it makes my it made my students laugh a lot so I hope that it will do the same for the those of you that uh, are going to try it for the first time <laughs> Um, on this slide, I'm not going to really play any of these links. Um, what I did essentially, I mean, there are many um, tutorials online if you want to learn more about Pear Deck. Um, but these are just a couple of ones that I've shared in the past with my students. I, I watched it myself when I was learning Pear Deck. Um, so just a few suggestions for you, you know, on your own time to, if you want to learn more about it, please, um, don't hesitate to look at those or look at the other ones that are out there. Uh, the first, uh, link there is, uh, from the Pear Deck website. So if you go on their actual website too, you're going to find a lot of things that are going to be useful for you in terms of how you could use Pear Deck and whatnot. Uh, yes, Paulette. Um, <clears throat> silly question. I'm still trying to download yeah, yeah. this thing, but. Um, so it's it's free. Yes, it's free. Yes, you can get the premium version, but you don't need the premium version to to use. Okay, it. because That's when I'm it. trying to get it, yes. like it goes go yeah. to premium, and I didn't want to go to premium. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. When, uh, Paulette, when I saw that, I clicked on the home button on the upper left hand corner, and it brought me back. So because uh, yeah. I, I I was looking for a way to exit that. No, I'm not interested. And I couldn't find it, so I just clicked on the uh, on the home button, and it worked. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> yep. Okay. So some resources. Okay. Perfect. So now what we're gonna do is um, what I like us to do. Be I'm gonna show you guys how to um, install the Pear Deck add-on on a Google slide, um, and then. After that, like, I'm not going to read all the instructions here. So I would ask you guys to kind of go through the instructions yourself after we you uh, you actually download the add-on and then um, kind of play around with it. And Julie and I will be there to kind of help you navigate through it. But the idea is it's not necessarily a very complicated tool to use. Um, however, you just need to kind of play with the icons and kind of see how you could use it to your benefits okay so what I'll do first is I'll show you guys how to do the add-on so what I'll ask everybody to do is just go on your google and write Pear Deck add-on in google slides google and this is the one that can everybody see my screen when I'm okay, perfect. So this is where I 
you, everybody should go. I already installed it, so it's installed. But for those of you that didn't, please install it. And then you can just open a blank Google slide. So this is the one that I had created. And on top here, there's, as you can see, it says extension. And when you click on extension, Pear Deck should appear right here. And once you open Pear Deck, as you can see, it's on the right side menu right here. We were flirting with Lumio a couple of years back, but this is far and above beyond. <laughs> It's a lot right. more user friendly. Yeah, it's very user friendly, very, very user friendly for sure. And and it's really good because, you know, as, as a teacher, I mean, you, you know, those of you who have taught online or I mean taught in a classroom as well, there's not you don't have a lot of time to learn different tools. And with Paradeck, what I found is that when I was teaching online, it was really something that I learned in a couple of hours. Um and I could use it literally the next day with my students, right? Um, and the more you kind of navigate through it, the more you kind of understand how you can use it and different ways that you could use it. But again, it's very easy. Um, it's it's not complicated. It doesn't take a lot of time. And that's the whole idea. If we want to kind of use um, tools that are not going to be too time consuming for those teachers that don't have the time to learn it. Okay, so now that everybody has it open. What I'm going to ask you guys to do is um, you can follow the instructions that I provided on the slide. You could, but you don't necessarily need to. You could just essentially use the right side menu and play around with it and see the different ways that you could use it. So there's a template library here. You can click on the discover more. This, these little icons here are for Google's, uh, for slides that have already been created and that you want to make them interactive, okay? But you don't necessarily need to do that. You could just, the good thing about Product is that it creates the slides for you. So you can just use the slides that are pre-made instead of using your own. And that's what I loved about it. And then there's, as you can go down, there's different ways different things that you could do. So play around with it. And um, Julia and I are gonna be here to kind of answer any questions that you're gonna have in terms of if you're having any issues using it or if any questions that comes up that you wanna know how to do it. Um, but the idea here is that you get your hands on and you kind of use it and see how, it could, um, how you could learn it and, and benefit from it. And just so you know, you can also use this for PowerPoints. Um, so for those of you that are, don't use Google Slide and use PowerPoint, you can definitely also use it um, as an add-on on PowerPoint. Yeah, I, think, I think it's important for everyone to know that we're, we're available. You can always reach out to us. And you know, if you're having uh, problems with, uh, with getting the app or whatever, I think that once it's it's in PowerPoint or um, in the Microsoft, in your Microsoft accounts, it'd be much easier to uh, play around with. Yeah. I was looking at the uh, pair deck for um, Microsoft, and I believe that from what I'm reading here, that uh, you can still use the free features after the premium access ends. So you get a trial of 30 mm -hmm. days and then you can, so yeah. that might be worth it, yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. You get three day through thirty days free, and then but afterwards you can uh, continue using it. Yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. exactly back to the free version. Yeah, but yeah. you don't have to put in your uh, credit your card. No, credit card no, thing. Okay, so no, they, you don't so, need to put your credit card information or anything like that. No. So, so I was able to uh, to get on uh, with Microsoft, so it should be all right. Yeah. I've been flirting with the ask students a question uh, features that works nicely with the text and the choice and the number and the website back. Seamless, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think it's where the stars are at. I think that's the upgrade with the draw and the draggable. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, the draggables, right? 
there's also somewhere I don't oh yeah when you click on the hamburger next to start lesson it says require student logins so when I start a Pear Deck just by starting a slideshow does the Pear Deck automatically start like the interactivity of it when you start the, you mean when you start the lesson yeah yes the student so as you can see this is required I see where you're talking about required student to log in so you could uh, make that as a requirement or not a requirement right so they don't necessarily need to log in what's the uh, easiest way like you can just give a code like today you guys that, gave a code that's the easiest way to do it because they don't necessarily need to log in I usually put would put the login uh, option off and would just give the exactly like we did today the link and the code and everybody would have access to it how do you generate that link and code i guess when you're finished or yeah, something when you're finished you're able to generate uh, everything and um uh, it does it for you it's automated yeah okay Because you want to be able to also go back and look at the questions that there were the students asked, um, the comments and whatnot. And even um, like we mentioned at the beginning, there are two options, right? There is also Pear Deck uh, for homework and assignments, right? Um, so you'll be able to access that and kind of see what the students have done on it collaboratively or individually. So you can export the data. So say if you did in like a little quiz or something, you could export it and exactly. then you could have it to keep on file. Okay. That's it. Yeah. And it goes in Excel, I guess. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So it does the work for you. <laughs> yeah. That's what we want just to make it as seamless as possible and easy to retrieve. It's very icon driven. It's very easy once once everything's installed. It's easy yeah. to kind of go over, grab it, and throw it on. You know, so I, I think in terms of, of also a recurring, uh, like the temperature check, I thought was a really good uh, good thing. Mm -hmm. Or you know, you get to one point in your lesson or one point during the class where mm, I better check things out, and then it's already there. You can just throw it up. Okay, what do you think about this? Give me a you know a a, a word for this or some sort of formative assessment that comes up very quickly and uh, can be used often. And it gives students a, a visual signal that, oh, it's time for us to do this now. Yeah. Exactly, the visual aspect of it. I, that's what I really liked about it because that's what I found kind of um, got the student's attention where a regular slide or a regular PowerPoint doesn't always do that. Yeah. So if ever you want to test it uh, yourself, like let's say if you want to use it and uh, you want to know how the students see it. So uh, what I did, as you, can, you guys could see, I opened the slide as a teacher, but I also opened it as a student. OK, to kind of doing see, that. Yeah. To kind of see how, to how are you doing that? Oh, how are you doing that? So it starts. I'm going to delete. So if ever you don't want a slide, for example, I'll just delete it. So delete that. OK start session so i'm doing an instructor paced activity okay so i click on this and then okay if you want to go as a student all you have to do is copy this link okay mm -hmm. so i copy this link put it in and then it will ask you to put a code and this is the code right here so again copy this code I enter it and you are there as a student right now so if I look back now to my so I close this so this is my slide as a teacher so I can essentially so let's say this so I'm a student. So this is what I will see as a student. Okay. Right. 
and you can interact with yourself essentially to kind of test it and see how it works. <laughs> so there's no preview where you can do that before you actually like have to send the code and everything? This is the way that I usually would do the preview. No, there's no other way to kind of preview how it is. Okay. But it works pretty well like this uh, when I use it. it gives if you're, if you're in the middle of editing and you have that code, does that code remain with that? Uh, so slideshow no, or it no, changes actually, every time you launch it yeah it does change every time you launch it yeah so if you're editing like let's say if I'm editing stuff on my google slide I should close these and relaunch it and it will give me a new code each time I, every time actually you close the presentation so if I were to close this it will give me a new code so let's say you're you're let's say you're using google classroom and you have this pair deck in a uh, as one of the activities, but you want students to use it individually. What happens as a teacher? Like, do you have access to see what their answers are for different classes, even if it's the same um, same pair deck? Like, yes, you you we mean same pair deck. Well, like if I put it in Google Classroom with my yeah. Sec 1 students in one class and Sec 1 students in the second class, right? but it's a copy of the same thing, do you... You could see two different ones, yeah. Even okay. though it's exactly the same, uh, it doesn't mean that they're connect together. No, they don't, even if it's the same. You can make a copy, like five copy of the same one, if you like. Okay. And, and where would you access the answers if if it's something that's being done individually as an example um you can access the answers so if i have five copies of the same slideshow uh, with yep. five different students um and i see like yep. what their answers are and everything on your Pear Deck account as a teacher, you will be able to ac have access to all the presentations. It will actually okay. be all Connects laid out. Them all. Yeah, okay. it will be all laid out for you, all the presentation that you've done, the ones you're working on, uh, the ones that the students are working on. So you'll have access to that as a teacher. Do you have um, an example of that where you can share your screen, like to show um, us what multiples uh, look like or? See if I, let me see, hold on. Um, I'm just going to share my screen for a second, darling. Um, I, I mean, it's just to show you, like, once you log in to your Paradox account as a teacher, uh, kind of how, like, how the menu could look like. Obviously, you organize it the way that, you know, suits you best. But, for example, like, this one right here is session in progress. So, it says that the session is in progress. Like, these are some of the other ones that I've had. But... Um, but essentially, once you logged into your Pear Deck account as a teacher, you'll be able to see all the slides that you've interacted with, the students have interacted with, um, and then you can organize this as you please. You can organize them into files and folders. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I definitely want to use this. I feel like I have no time. Uh, <laughs> no time. But I it's always the same thing you kind of have to work with it a little bit and then it's yeah like a nature exactly. you're gonna work and it goes and but it's that it's that hump at the beginning that's always hard i wish i had seen this before we started the blended learning mm. because i maybe would have tried to help them integrate a pair deck into their blended learning so yeah 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 I always revisit stuff you know <laughs> yeah so but yeah, okay. like Mark said, just start using it. I mean, if and, and yeah. if you do, you just roll with it, right? And if there's any issues, you kind of navigate through it and, and you learn as you go. And that's what, that's how I learned it. And I still have stuff probably to learn from it. You know, I'm so um that I think that's the best way to kind of use it. And yeah. then and do you think there are enough uh, options in the the free one for teachers to use? Like there there's definitely enough i mean i've used the free version myself so right yeah there's definitely enough yeah. we never have money as teachers for something like that <laughs> <laughs> okay well that's exciting perfect so is that everything or should should i stay? Yeah. <laughs> that's it okay that's it we're good okay <laughs> yeah
<laughs> but I mean, if you have any questions or, you know, you can always reach out and, and you can tell us like how, how are you using it, how it's working. Awesome. Bye, everybody. So, Bye, Paulette. Okay.